From Lessons by Mary Wollstonecraft Come to me, my little girl. Are you tired of playing? Yes. Sit down and rest yourself while I talk to you. Have you seen the baby? Poor little thing. Oh, here it comes. Look at him. How helpless he is. Four years ago, you were as feeble as this very little boy. See, he cannot hold up his head. He is forced to lie on his back. If his mamma do not turn him to the right or left side, he will soon begin to cry. He cries to tell her that he is tired with lying on his back. Perhaps he is hungry. What shall we give him to eat? Poor fellow, he cannot eat. Look in his mouth. He has no teeth. How did you do when you were a baby like him? You cannot tell. Do you want to know? Look then at the dog with her pretty puppy. You could not help yourself as well as the puppy. You could only open your mouth when you were lying like William on my knee. So I put you to my breast, and you sucked as the puppy sucks now, for there was milk enough for you. When you were hungry, you began to cry, because you could not speak. You were seven months without teeth, always sucking. But after you got one, he began to gnaw a crust of bread. It was not long before another came, pop. At ten months, you had four pretty white teeth, and you used to bite me. Poor mamma. Still, I did not cry, because I am not a child. But you hurt me very much. So I said to papa, it is time the little girl should eat. She is not naughty, yet she hurts me. I have given her a crust of bread, and I must look for some other milk. The cow has got plenty, and her jumping calf eats grass very well. He has got more teeth than my little girl. Yes, says Papa, and he tapped you on the cheek. You are old enough to learn to eat. Come to me, and I will teach you, my little dear. For you must not hurt poor Mamma, who has given you her milk when you could not take anything else. You were then on the carpet, for you could not walk well. So when you were in a hurry, you used to run, quick, 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 on your hands and feet, like the dog. Away you ran to Papa, and putting both your arms around his leg, for your hands were not big enough, you looked up at him and laughed. What did this laugh say when you could not speak? Cannot you guess by what you now say to Papa? Ah, it was. Play with me, Papa, play with me. Papa began to smile, and you knew that the smile was always yes. So you got a ball, and Papa threw it along the floor. Roll, 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 and you ran after it again and again. How pleased you were. Look at William. He smiles, but you could laugh loud. Ha, ha, ha. Papa laughed louder than the little girl and rolled the ball still faster. Then he put the ball on a chair, and you were forced to take hold of the back and stand up to reach it. At last you reached too far, and down you fell. Not indeed on your face, because you put out your hands. You were not much hurt, but the palms of your hands smarted with the pain, and you began to cry like a little child. It is only very little children who cry when they are hurt, and it is to tell their mamma that something is the matter with them. Now you can come to me and say, Mamma, I have hurt myself. Pray rub my hand, it smarts. Put something on it to make it well, a piece of rag to stop the blood. You are not afraid of a little blood, not you. You scratched your arm with a pin. It bled a little, but it did you no harm. See, the skin has grown over it again. Take care not to put pins in your mouth, because they will stick in your throat and give you pain. Oh, you cannot think what pain a pin would give you in your throat, should it remain there. But if you by chance swallow it, I should be obliged to give you every morning something bitter to drink. You never tasted anything so bitter, and you would grow very sick. I never put pins in my mouth, but I am older than you, and know how to take care of myself. My mamma took care of me when I was a little girl like you. She bade me never put anything in my mouth without asking her what it was. When you were a baby with no more sense than William, you put everything in your mouth to gnaw, to help your teeth to cut through the skin. Look at the puppy, how he bites that piece of wood. William presses his gums against my finger. Poor boy, he is so young he does not know what he is doing. When you bite anything, it is because you are hungry. See how much taller you are than William. In four years you have learned to eat, to walk, to talk. Why do you smile? can do much more, you think. You can wash your hands and face very well. You should never kiss a dirty face. And you can comb your head with the pretty comb you always put by in your own drawer. To be sure, you do all this to be ready to take a walk with me. You would be obliged to stay at home if you could not comb your own hair. 
Betty is busy getting the dinner ready and only brushes William's hair because he cannot do it for himself. Betty is making an apple pie. You love an apple pie, but I do not bid you make one. Your hands are not strong enough to mix the butter and flour together, and you must not try to pare the apples because you cannot manage a great knife. Never touch the large knives. They are very sharp, and you might cut your finger to the bone. You are a little girl and ought to have a little knife. When you are as tall as I am, you shall have a knife as large as mine, and when you are as strong as I am and have learned to manage it, you will not hurt yourself. You can trundle a hoop, you say, and jump over a stick. Oh, I forgot, and march like the men in the red coats when Papa plays a pretty tune on the fiddle. What? You think that you shall soon be able to dress yourself entirely? I am glad of it. I have something else to do. You may go and look for your frock in the drawer, but I will tie it till you are stronger. Betty will tie it when I am busy. I button my gown myself. I do not want a maid to assist me when I am dressing. But you have not yet got sense enough to do it properly, and must beg somebody to help you till you are older. Children grow older and wiser at the same time. William is not able to take a piece of meat, because he has not got the sense which would make him think that without teeth, meat would do him harm. He cannot tell what is good for him. The sense of children grows with them. You know much more than William, now you walk alone and talk, but you do not know as much as the boys and girls you see playing yonder, who are half as tall again as you, and they do not know half as much as their fathers and mothers who are men and women grown. Papa and I were children, like you, and men and women took care of us. I carry William because he is too weak to walk. I lift you over a stile and over the gutter when you cannot jump over it. You know already that potatoes will not do you any harm, but I must pluck the fruit for you till you are wise enough to know the ripe apples and pears. The hard ones would make you sick, and then you must take physic. You do not love physic. I do not love it any more than you. But I have more sense than you. Therefore I take care not to eat unripe fruit, or anything else that would make my stomach ache, or bring out ugly red spots on my face. When I was a child, my mamma chose the fruit for me, to prevent my making myself sick. I was just like you. I used to ask for what I saw, without knowing whether it was good or bad. Now I have lived a long time. I know what is good. I do not want anybody to tell me. Look at those two dogs. The old one brings the ball to me in a moment. The young one does not know how. He must be taught. I can cut your shift in a proper shape. You would not know how to begin. You would spoil it. But you will learn. John digs in the garden and knows when to put the seed in the ground. You cannot tell whether it should be in the winter or summer. Try to find it out. When do the trees put out their leaves? In the spring, you say, after the cold weather. Fruit would not grow ripe without very warm weather. Now I'm sure you can guess why the summer is the season for fruit. Papa knows that peas and beans are good for us to eat with our meat. You are glad when you see them, but if he did not think for you and have the seed put in the ground, we should have no peas or beans. Poor child. She cannot do much for herself. When I let her do anything for me, it is to please her, for I could do it better myself. Oh, the poor puppy has tumbled off the stool. Run and stroke him. Put a little milk in a saucer to comfort him. You have more sense than he. You can pour the milk into the saucer without spilling it. He would cry for a day with hunger without being able to get it. You are wiser than the dog. You must help him. The dog will love you for it and run after you. I feed you and take care of you. You love me and follow me for it. When the book fell down on your foot, it gave you great pain. The poor dog felt the same pain just now. Take care not to hurt him when you play with him. And every morning leave a little milk in your basin for him. Do not forget to put the basin in a corner, lest somebody should fall over it. When the snow covers the ground, save the crumbs of bread for the birds. In the summer they find feed enough and do not want you to think about them. I make broth for the poor man who is sick. A sick man is like a child. He cannot help himself. When I caught cold some time ago, I had such a pain in my head I could scarcely hold it up. Papa opened the door very softly, because he loves me. You love me, yet you made a noise. You had not the sense to know that it made my head worse, 
till Papa told you. Papa had a pain in the stomach, and he would not eat the fine cherries or grapes on the table. When I brought him a cup of chamomile tea, he drank it without saying a word or making an ugly face. He knows that I love him, and that I would not give him anything to drink that has a bad taste, if it were not to do him good. You asked me for some apples when your stomach ached, but I was not angry with you. If you had been as wise as Papa, you would have said, I will not eat the apples today. I must take some chamomile tea. You say that you do not know how to think. Yes, you do, a little. The other day, Papa was tired. He had been walking about all the morning. After dinner, he fell asleep on the sofa. I did not bid you be quiet, but you thought of what Papa said to you when my head ached. This made you think that you ought not to make a noise when Papa was resting himself. So you came to me and said to me very softly, Pray reach me, my ball, and I will go and play in the garden till Papa wakes. You were going out, but, thinking again, you came back to me on your tiptoes. Whisper, whisper, Pray Mama call me when Papa wakes, for I shall be afraid to open the door to see, lest I should disturb him. Away you went, creep, creep, and shut the door as softly as I could have done myself. That was thinking. When a child does wrong at first, she does not know any better. But after she has been told that she must not disturb Mama when poor Mama is unwell, she thinks herself that she must not wake Papa when he is tired. Another day. We will see if you can think about anything else. The End